Hello and welcome to another gaming review here on the YouTube channel for the Sanitarium.fm, a gamer radio station. I am the Predicted Cyborg, and today I'll be looking at Twin Stick Survival Arena Game of Carrots and Blood by Tried Games, of which we've been given a review code um, through Keymailer. The title of this game is quite an interesting one. I've had a few friends comment on it, and it really is rather indicative of the game's concept. You can play as a bunch of characters upon an island infested with mutants, mutated from the resident villagers through some sort of incident, and you literally need to dash around shooting off projectiles to kill them before they reach the giant carrot in the middle of the arena and, well, murder it. The first character you have to play with is a rabbit with a uh, ninja-style sort of headband and character projectiles, which explains the carrot part of the title fairly well. And as for the blood part, well, this game is kind of gory in a retro pixel game sort of way. You collect brain pieces as you kill mutants, blood splatters the ground as mutants burst, the living giant carrot you protect gets more and more horrifically damaged as mutants assault it, and each playable character has their own individual death animation, some more graphic than others. Needless to say, if you're a squeamish type of gamer, this will probably not make the game appeal to you all that much. Uh, but if you can stand it though, as a playable game, it's fairly addicting. The majority of the modes in are for co-op, um, requiring you to have at least a second player. But there is a single player mode that throws you into the arena solo as you fight off waves of advancing mutant opponents emerging from the trees that line the sides. Uh, this is mostly what I've been playing for this review, and at first, as always, I wasn't exactly great at the game. However, with practice, I found myself pulling off longer and longer rounds, dodging mutants coming towards me, and racking up ever higher scores, um, which is being measured by the amount of brain pieces you come out with. And even better, um, I actually wanted to come back to the game to earn more, which made the collecting of brain pieces for my collection to acquire various uh, things in the game an awful lot easier than it otherwise could have been. There are over 10 characters you can actually play as in this game, ranging from an animated voodoo doll to a pixely version of PewDiePie. Seriously. And you unlock them by picking up the special DNA drops that will appear randomly as you fight in the arena, and then take them to the lab of the resident mad mutant scientist. Uh, if you've collected enough brain pieces to unlock the next character, he will take the DNA sample with your approval and take the amount of brain pieces and will perform a fusion. Uh, you won't actually get the character then and there, but uh, you can go away and fight in an arena match to earn more brain pieces and then he will actually poke his head into your next arena match in a very strange fourth wall breaking manner that alarmed me at first to inform you that your new character is ready and visiting him again at the lab will add that character to your roster and will make that character playable. There are also various power-ups and equipable items that you can get in-game with the power-ups being drops that you get during battle and lasting for a temporary amount of time and the equipable items being both drops in battle if they're uh, of the shades variety all sold at little item store for prices of various amounts of brain pieces and they are more permanent or well they they don't they don't sort of fade away and uh, you actually get use of them like they're always going to be there and they'll always regenerate after a battle i personally chose to equip my characters with a ring that allows me to revive them once per battle as it meant i could then recoup my costs spent on this ring by getting more brain pieces per battle the power-ups, though, do things uh, such as apply a shield around the giant carrot that causes any mutant that hits it to die instantly, um, and that lasts for a short amount of time. As I say, it's temporary. Or my personal favourite power-up uh, that basically lets your projectiles be magnetically attracted back to you. And because of that, I often use often use it to get a series of projectiles orbiting my character and then run around to let said orbiting projectiles deal with waves of mutants that were coming in. Uh, word of warning though, if you decide to try this out yourself, your own projectiles can and will hurt the giant carrot you're protecting, so watch your aim if you decide to try this one yourself. Uh, so speaking of the card modes, which as I said before, they make up the majority of the things you can actually do in this game, I 
can't really comment on how they are to play, seeing as how, as I said, I've had to review this game based on just playing it solo. However, from what I do know, the two-player stuff, two to four-player stuff, I should say, uh, the two-player arena mode introduces a new mechanic that you kind of you get with single-player. Basically, during battle, you can kill your fellow bunny basketballs to relieve tension, yet such an act will leave you open to attack as you can't really move while you're doing it. Cutesy, and I'm not entirely sure what the kissing does. In fact, I'm not entirely sure if it does anything at all. I've actually gone through and done the research. I can't find anything else other than relieves tension. But it is really adorable, really cute, and somehow fits in perfectly in the midst of all the blood, gore, and cutesy fur of this game. Uh, other co-op modes offer up to four players and they introduce uh, PvP modes that will see you shooting at each other while attempting to avoid hazards, such as trying not to fall into a big, deep, dark pit, uh, hit spikes lining the arena, as in you're surrounded by very prickly, rosebush-esque type things, or indeed getting blown up by a minefield, depending on what stage you're actually battling on. Again, this all seems very standard for this game's style. There is also a short story mode I've heard talked about, but uh, again, I haven't actually managed to find out too many details about it, and apparently there's a big surprise ending at the end, which... Well, I don't really like spoilers, so I haven't actually gone looking for this ending or any gameplay videos of it. If I actually manage to play it through with a friend, uh, obviously I will find out and I'll probably let you all know. And uh, so speaking about this game and how it works, the movement is very fluid, it is a twin stick, and playing it on the PC, you use the WASD keys to move around and the arrow keys to shoot in certain directions. Uh, it took a little while for me to get used to this, but once you get used to it, you can have an amazing amount of fun with this. The graphic style is, as I said before, it's very pixely, it's very uh, retro and cute in some ways, and uh, surprisingly very gory, given how pixelated it is. If there's one sort of complaint I have with this game, as with the uh, Cyborg Rage I reviewed last week, you can't actually get this game out of full screen mode, which is a little bit of a pain, and there was actually a cutscene before the very first menu, which unfortunately I wasn't able to film, as I needed to make sure this game would stream properly, so I wasn't able to catch it on video. However, I must admit that the full screen of this doesn't actually really be a, it's not really so much of a problem this time because I am actually able to capture it on OBS to stream it and indeed to film it, which makes it an awful lot easier to deal with than Cyborg Rage does. So it's not so bad trying to film it or stream it this one. This this is actually a uh, stream friendly game which is good uh, speaking as somebody who does do content creation and stuff. This is a streamable game and I hope to actually find somebody else who wants to play this game so I can actually take part in some of the co-op stuff because it does like an awful lot of fun. We'll do that over voice chat so we can coordinate our uh, carrots. That's not something you end though. So this game I had an awful lot of fun with it. Despite the lack of variety for me in single player, collecting the brain pieces to unlock characters did actually give me a goal to work towards, and the deaths never really felt cheap or unfair. They were always obviously my own fault for not keeping my my eye on my backs, the bushes and stuff emerging, or indeed on the giant carrot I was meant to protect, because once that thing reaches zero, you die, or the mutants in the area die, it's a, it's a bloodbath quite basically, even more of a bloodbath than usual. I don't know if I could really see myself playing the game long term after I've unlocked all the characters, if I can't actually find somebody else to go into the co-op mode with me, but for the short term this game it keeps me coming back and wanting to play more, because, you know, what's better and what's more fun than making mutants explode into bloody puddles of brain, DNA and anything else that they drop? And so that does it for this review. Thank you for tuning in. I, of course, am the Predicted Cyborg, and this was a video game review of a little indie game, Twin Stick Survival of Carrots and Blood, for the Sanitarium.fm. Remember, do stay tuned to this channel for more video reviews, 
more game reviews, and tune in to our shows at the website for some awesome music to accompany your gaming in the evenings or afternoons. I will see you next time. Goodbye.